my name is Ray Luo. Uh, I'm an NG editor for UCLA's Pacific Ties. <laughs> Campus Progress is a publication of the year this year. Um, I just want to, by the way, want to advertise we have some free copies sitting outside. So feel free to take one. I don't want to bring them back home in the airplane. So um, and I want to give a shout out to our editor in chief, uh, Maria Yu without whom um, none of this would have been possible for Pacific Ties. Speaker Pelosi has been here before. Two years ago, after leading the passage of the measures of the 100 Hours Plan, she came to Com Com uh, Campus Progress to reiterate, among other things, support for science and opposition to war. Since then, we have seen the uh, arrival of a new president, as well as legislation that put over $50 billion into public education and $17 billion into scientific research. Speaker Pelosi is familiar with getting results. She came uh, from a family with two great uh, mayors of Baltimore to become chairwoman of the Northern California Democrats and eventually the first woman to become Speaker of the House. Throughout her tenure, she has supported the political freedom of minority groups worldwide, laid the groundwork for universal health care and universal right to marriage, and also helped legislate economic relief for the lower and middle classes. It's been two years since she has last visited, so please join me in welcoming back a leader for justice and compassion, Madam Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Thank you all. Thank you all very much for your warm welcome, Ray. Thank you for your kind introduction. John Podesta, thank you for your tremendous leadership. It's great to be here at Campus Progress's annual conference. It's great to be back again with all of you. They didn't tell me when I came that I'd be following John Oliver and I would, go, <laughs> and I would come before President Clinton. <laughs> I'm in pretty good company, and uh, uh, I don't know if I'll be as funny as John Oliver, but I, uh, I hope to be able to give you a report that is worthy of the admiration of all of you and of President Clinton as well. You come to Washington, and let, Ray, let me thank you again for your leadership, and I want to acknowledge David Halperin, uh, who is the director of Campus Project. <laughs> to the Center for American Progress, and David, you are, uh, by uh, organizing young people, you are preparing us for the future. Let me tell you the, what is happening on Capitol Hill. I, I, I can't stay that long because uh, I have to get back to the floor of the House. But here's what's happening. Here's what's happening. This is very special for me to be off campus to be off campus, but I'll tell them I'm with campus progress. That probably should count. You know that on January 20th, President Obama stood on the steps of the Capitol and he asked for swift, bold action now to take our country in a new direction. He said we will harness the soil, the sun, and the wind to fuel our, fuel our cars and run our factories. He called for a education for the 21st century, infrastructure that keep America green, and new energy jobs in that arena. In every, he said science is back in its rightful place, and he wanted action on all of these areas and more. One week and one day from the time of that speech, the House of Representatives passed legislation giving this, that president the biggest economic recovery package in history and in record time. 100 days later, on the 100th day, the Congress in the House and in the Senate passed the president's budget. 
It was the first time a president's budget had been passed in many years because uh, the Democrats who went in power were not passing Republican president's budget. In fact, the Republicans, when they were in power, did not even pass President Bush's budget. But this was a budget, a statement of our national values. We had not seen one since President Clinton was president of the United States. A statement of our national values that took down the deficit, created jobs, and, uh, uh, and invested in three things to turn around our economy. Education, health care, and energy. And that's what we're in the midst of now. As you know, about 10 days ago, right before the 4th of July break, Congress passed historic transformational legislation honoring the pillar of the president's budget, which was to address the climate change crisis as well as to reduce our dependence on foreign oil. For me, it was my flagship issue as Speaker of the House. I believe that the climate change issue and the energy issue are the, uh, the biggest challenge of your generation and of our time in power. And so, and so I commend you because I know at Drexel University in Philadelphia, you organize competitions for students to engineers to build electric vehicles at Morehouse. Well, let's hear it for Drexel in Philadelphia. At Morehouse College in Atlanta, you helped low-income neighbors reduce their energy use and save money by installing energy-efficient light bulbs. And in many of you, over 300 of you came to... Okay, let's hear it for Morehouse College in Atlanta. And more than 300 of you from Campus Project came, Progress came to Capitol Hill to lobby for the energy bill. We call it ACES, energy bill. And what this energy bill is, is a, a national security bill. It's a bill to reduce our dependence on foreign oil, which is a national security issue. It's a health issue to reduce uh, pollution and emissions in the air. It is an economic issue to invest in innovation to keep America number one so we're competitive in the world economy with new green technologies and creating good paying green jobs here in the United States. And it is a moral issue. If you believe, as I do, that this planet is God's creation, we have a moral responsibility to preserve it. In any event, we all have a moral event, a responsibility to pass it on to all of you and you to the next generations in a better uh, form than it is now. And so we pass this legislation, historic, transformational, and met with a firestorm of opposition from the forces of the status quo that exist in Washington, D.C. That's why your advocacy, your mobilization, your uh, working among uh, the students in your schools is so important. That's why I have confidence in the future, because of you, because you are willing to take that responsibility. We will, uh, we will reduce emissions by 80 percent by 2050, at least 80 percent by 2050. <laughs> Two more, because we have a president about to come on. Two more issues I want to talk about. One is education. And I know that you have been very much, uh, uh, very much in the advocacy uh, for making college more affordable. Education is a key issue for us because it's a, innovation begins in the classroom. The four, ish, the four words that I use to describe our initiatives for growing our economy, science, 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 and science, all of that begins in the classroom. Let's hear it for science. <laughs> but I want you to know this. I want you to know that elections make a difference, if I may be allowed a partisan moment. And when we took power and came in in uh, 2007, we passed the largest increase in college aid since the GI Bill in the 1940s, boosting college aid by more than $20 billion. Just that one. And then in the recovery bill, the stimulus bill earlier this year, uh, it, it included more than $15 billion more for Pell Grants and increased uh, funding for work-study program to allow an additional 133,000 more students to participate. And just last week, on July 1st, every student who receives, federal loan, uh, who receives a federal loan will see your interest rates go down. 
and they will can and they will continue to go down until 2011. Also on July 1st, the IBR, the Income Repayment Plan, went into effect, which will ensure that, ensure that those with federal student loans are only required to pay what they can afford. And those of you who choose to devote yourself to public service will receive an additional benefits, including accelerated debt forgiveness. That's just the beginning. That's just the beginning. Now we're working with President Obama to reform student loan programs so that they are reliable and affordable for you and expand Pell Grants to be sure that they keep pace with inflation. That's two of the pillars, energy, education. And right now we're in the healthcare debate. We on our side of the aisle believe, and, and I'm Speaker of the whole House, so I would hope that well, this will be bipartisan, believe that healthcare is a right, not a privilege. And that, and that we will have affordable, quality, accessible health care for all Americans. I promised the President that I would have a bill out of the House of Representatives before the August break, and we will do just that. And, and, it, will, and it will have a public option. <laughs> Has to be the youngest member, huh? How old are you? Five, wow. Five years old. The future is yours. You are the, you are the future, as all are all of you. <laughs> but we really need your help on this health care reform bill. Because the, again, the forces of the status quo are hard at work putting out their misconceptions about what this bill will do. They will tell you that this legislation will put the government between you and your doctor. Not so. What we're trying to do is take the insurance companies out from between you and your doctor. It's pretty exciting to think that you don't have to stay locked in a job because of the health benefits you receive there, that it's portable, that if your child, if you as a child or, or, or one of these days when you have children, uh, have challenges, physical other challenges, that you do not have to stay in a job, that you will have the liberation, the freedom of having health care that will follow you wherever you go. It's a pretty exciting and dynamic initiative for our country. It is President Obama's first among equals, first priority. He said he's placing his political capital on the line to get this legislation passed. But that's what I'm asking you to help us do. We need all, we can maneuver all we want in the Congress, and we will. And we will. And sometimes people don't like to see legislation being made. It's a, it's a challenging uh, <laughs> endeavor. But I'm willing to take the heat as long as we get the bill. So we need, we need to have our inside maneuvering magnified by the outside mobilization that you can provide and have provided. Because this is, again, transformational. It's so important for our individuals and their personal security and their good health. It's important for our country to have a healthy America, but also to have our businesses be competitive in the world markets, not bogged down by health care costs. It's important to reduce the deficit, not heaping mountains of debt on future generations when we bring down the cost of health care and the Medicare and Medicare Medicaid entitlements. So, so much is at stake. This is really the big moment. The Greeks had a word for it. It's called ananke. In some interpretation, it meant scarcity, and other, it meant opportunity. So where opportunity and scarcity come together, you have to make important choices. You have to establish priorities. And our priority is that the American people will have health care 
as a right and that it will be fair and equitable and that our environment and our energy and climate crisis will have environmental justice associated with it and that our education policy will be one that provides justice for all so that everyone has the best opportunity uh, that, they, that, they, that their uh, particular aspirations um, uh, reach out to. So thank you all for what you are doing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mission San Francisco. Oh, so are there some Californians in the crowd? <laughs> All right, thank you, Campus Progress. Are you ready to fight us, win this health fight on Capitol Hill and for the American people? Are you ready to support President Barack Obama in passing energy, education, and health care, the three pillars for the future? Thank you all very much. Good to see you. Bye-bye. Thank you.